Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to, in the spirit of making our own tools our own, we're going to take one of these little mini brass planes and polish it up and kind of make it a better working tool. Stay tuned, find out how. So I went to Harbor Freight the other day, picking up a bunch of just random junk that, you know, cheap stuff, expendables, sandpaper and things. Um, but I came across this little three piece mini brass plane set. So it's basically the one of these, but just smaller, right? And they're meant to do like fine, little fine work, get in little tight spots and you know, like, a, for example, like an antenna or something, you could come in there and kind of file or like plane off little bits. So um, they're not completely useful, but you know, they're, they are what they are. So they give you three different kinds. They give you kind of like this, like bull nose design where the blades on the front. Um, then they give you kind of a standard plane that's got a little bit of like hardwood inside, which seems pretty cool. I can't tell what that is. It's definitely got a finish on it, but um, kind of cool. But it's kind of a standard little hand plane that you can kind of push along. Blade comes out the bottom. And then they kind of have this uh, like scraper style. Like it's almost straight up and down kind of a blade. I don't, it might be kind of useful. I thought this would be more of like a low angle plane. Um, so I kind of thought this was in backwards, but I looked it up online and this is how it goes, I guess. I, I thought this would have been kind of more of a low angle kind of block plane type thing, but um, this apparently is how it goes. I don't know, but I don't want to focus on all these today. I think what I'll do is we'll focus on kind of the traditional one today. So I think what I'm going to do, we're going to, we're going to definitely smooth it out because this brass is rough. Uh, we're going to polish things. This screw handle, I can't tell if that's nailed in. It doesn't seem to be screwed in. So it's whatever this little piece to rest your finger on. Um, so everything's just kind of, I mean, it's Harbor Freight, right? So like the blade is, I don't know that that would be sharp enough to cut your fingernails with. And if you're going to see up close is not, can you see that? So if you can see the blade, I can't get this damn thing to focus on it. That's close. Um, it is not, it's not straight. So the blade's going to take a lot of work to actually become sharp like that is is so dull that like I don't I don't know that that would cut a piece of paper. Yeah, like like I could come in here and dig in and put effort on that and like that barely put scratches in it. So the blade's pretty much useless. So we've got to sharpen the blade uh, for sure and then kind of get this in somewhat of a functioning order. Um, that seems to sit in there okay. So they're kind of more novelty type thing. We'll, we'll flatten the bottom, but um, you know, we'll see where we can go with it. All right, so let's get started and make this thing somewhat useful because right now it's a paperweight. All right, so we got a piece of glass here. Um, we're going to put some sandpaper on it, but these are the main kind of parts. So we've got that piece, this piece, the blade that's just horrible. And then this, I don't know that this comes out. I don't have anything soft jaw I can pull that out with. Let me see. Finagle this guy out. Oh, well, that was easy. So it's literally just a little stud, just press fit in there. So we will do what we can with that. 
so let's start off with uh, getting this bottom flat because I, I doubt that bottom is flat at all. So let's start with that. All right, so I've got some 150 grit sandpaper. Just gonna set it on, I'm gonna dry sand it. Uh, do I have a marker out here? All right, so I'm gonna do the marker test. So if you don't know, uh, basically we're gonna draw this on the bottom, little squiggles with a marker. We'll just do a couple passes and that's gonna tell us if we have high spots, low spots, whatever. So there's 10 passes. You can tell the, the marker's gone there, but it's, it's there and there. So that's telling me this is a high spot and these are low spots. So we're just gonna sand this down. This is brass and wood, so this will go real fast with some 150. Um, we're gonna sand this down until we get down to just flat all the way across. So it's a flat piece of glass, so it should go real fast. Um, let's see what else can I do with this rough stuff I'm gonna just tilt this on its edge just a little bit just run maybe 10 passes or 12 so that's just gonna take off any high spots on these edges um, and make it so when we're running this along wood, we're not gonna leave scratches or anything on the sides. So, all right, that's good there. Still a little, feels rough here. So this feels just immediately better. I'm gonna round these top edges over because if you're holding it in your hand, you want this to be comfortable. And it's brass, so it will, uh, It'll sand real quick on the fronts. Kind of same, just so basically just going around all the edges and kind of rounding them over a little bit. Okay, so the sides, they've got some pretty good manufacturing scratches in them so why don't we take care of that too we'll just take all those out okay so we got that down that's 150 so I got some 220 grit. Just gonna sand it till those 150 scratches are gone on the sides. Okay, that's looking good. No more big deep scratches anywhere. All the 150s out, all right. So at this point, let's take it over to the polishing wheel and we'll polish this up. how good this wood polishes without any like finish or anything on it that's just polish it's nice it's like walnut or something it's a definitely a dark chocolatey brown but look at that that polish like just takes it up a whole different level I think I mentioned it in the slide rule video, but if you didn't see that, brass is a great conductor of heat. So as you're doing this, these little pieces will get hot so fast. 
So you can either wear gloves or just, you know, take your time with it and let it cool off, switch to other parts. Very careful with these little small pieces. Like that. Okay, so here's our finished pieces. Um, polish them up, clean off some of this uh, polishing residue. So the, the buffer can sometimes get a little bit of black on it, but there you go. Mirror finish all the way around. Looking good. Uh, and even that wood just finished up so nicely like just just the buffing wheel no oil or anything on that that's gonna look great i don't even think i need to finish that i was thinking about putting some type of oil on it but i think that's just fine so that polished up um this has a bunch of polishing residue on it still so i don't I, i'm not really sure what does it if you know what does that um if you've used a buffing wheel and stuff like that before with that compound and you know what causes that kind of black milled like build up stuff uh i just scraped out like this stuff here like it, it just comes off with your hand i know that's like the the metal right and the the polishing compound but if, if, is that expected is that normal to have um i always just assumed it was and just come back and rub it off or something but um is that I guess the expected outcome from that or am I doing something wrong am I building up too much heat on on the part like that came out nice or uh or is that just normal I don't know let me know down below in the comments because I'm trying to get you guys to comment more so maybe I'll just interact with you more how's that okay so we can start to put some of this back together. Well, not a whole lot, just mainly this piece, but let's get this piece just pressed but fitted back in there. So I've got this kind of pressed in there, but it's still like a bit of a of a gap right here. I can fit my fingernail in there. So I'm just gonna put it in the vise here and press it down in there. There we go. It's a press fit part, looks good. Let's just run the screw through here a couple times, clean out all that polishing residue and stuff. And then that's going to go in here. We'll just snug this down for now. The blade has to go in here still, but it's going to look kind of like that finished product. So the body of the plane is, is good now. Let's focus on the blade a little bit. Um, I'm not worried about getting this thing perfectly flat or anything. It's, it's not like, you know, like a hand plane blade, like, you know, like this guy where I'm worried about having it perfectly flat. This is for minor detail work. So I mainly just want to straighten the edge first. I'm going to make sure the edge is straight this way, like parallel across the blade. Then I'm going to come through, put a 30 degree bevel on it with some, probably some 150 and then go to 220 and then I'll put it on the stones and sharpen it and get this thing really working good. So let me come back. To, I don't know that that's worth showing you guys. Yeah, it might be. All right. So to start off, I, I want to just straighten this out. So I'm just going to get my, my square here and I can run the blade up. And just that little bit straightened it out nicely there. So right there, you can see no more gaps. 
that little gap there is the actual the notch in there so it's no gaps we're nice and flat and we're square which that was a lot faster than i expected all right let's get the sharpening stuff out and we'll put a, a good bevel i don't know that my so i've got like a, a bevel gauge i don't know that it's gonna fit on this but we'll see it's it is made for chisels too so maybe we can get it on so here's the bevel gauge we've got the blade in there and we're at a good roughly 30 degree angle there maybe a little steeper but it's okay so while i'm putting this tightness together tightening this blade up i have a question for you guys do you guys do any of you have like a like personal connections with your tools it's like a tool just using it looking at it it means something to you um you know i have a lot like you know for example this this hand plane means a lot to me because i restored this you know i i took it from kind of rusted and and damaged to a nice well functioning tool now right um for some reason well i know the reason but this screwdriver has so much meaning to me like i've had this screwdriver since i was a teenager um, i know exactly where i got it from and i don't know that he gave it to me intentionally or not but it's probably missing in his toolbox currently because he has like you know the stanley tools with like all the like the the partitions and stuff where the tools went and i'm pretty much bet you this one is probably empty in there or was empty at one time and he's replaced it at this point but every time i uh use this tool i think of my friend mike um but he has been like a mentor to me growing up he's what taught me like motorcycles and mechanics and things like that um really just solid dude but I think this is his screwdriver. So if it is, and you ever watch this, Mike, I'm sorry if this is yours, but uh, know that this thing has given me so many years of just, like, it just means something to me. Every time I use it, I need a screwdriver. I've got so many flathead screwdrivers. I need a screwdriver though. I always reach for this screwdriver. No matter how many new ones I buy, no matter what, if I need something to, to tighten something down, screw flathead, this is my tool, so. Just curious if any of you guys have a, a connection with your tools or certain tools mean something to you, like passed down from your dad or your grandpa or something, you know, like whatever. It just, it can mean something, you know. It's hot. Sorry about that battery died, but essentially I, I did the marker test. We got this down to a nice uh, even bevel across the top, so. That is looking better. And we'll use our India oil stone. So every India oil stone you put, you sharpen with oil, um, not water. Where is my oil? Basically, you don't need a ton, um, but a couple drops of oil. Um, I just use ballast oil gun oil on all mine. Um, so you can use whatever oil you want. This stuff does work pretty well though. That's a little too much, but that's okay. <laughs> spur there now and we're looking pretty good all the way across okay so let's get some of this excess oil off here for now flip our bullet our stone over a couple drops of oil so this is the fine side now so this is probably maybe 2,000 grit I don't know, the, the India oil stone doesn't really have the grits anywhere on it, just as coarse and fine. But like my other stones that I'll use to like sharpen my hand planes with and stuff, like this guy here, the coarse side is a thousand grit, 
the, sh the fine side is 6,000 grit. So that could be the same for India oil, but those feel a lot finer than this. So that I would say this is probably a thousand grit. And that bottom is probably 600 or so, which for this use, totally fine. All right, so okay, I got a nice burr all the way across. We're polished up. So now to the strop. So you can get these on Amazon uh, if you do want one. They're they're great for tuning up axes and small hand planes, even your chisels to a point, unless you are crazy like me and you want just just razor razor sharp, which you should be, but you know, if not, it's okay. So let's get our strop out. Ow. So a leather strop, a strop is just a piece of leather on a piece of wood. And same stuff as we polished the, uh, the, the brass body with over there. This is like a jeweler's rouge. So you just rub a little impregnated into the leather and then we're going to just run backwards. Actually, let's knock that burr off again. Okay. Nice. Okay. So now we're just going to run backwards. We're not back and forth like on the stone. And we're going to do maybe about 60, whoa, about 60, 70 straps we're going to do. There to show the sharpness. It's shaven. So we've got it going from just dull enough that we couldn't cut paper with it to shaving hair. Like I would call that pretty sharp. So let's put our plane together. Okay, so let's loosen this screw, get this thing together. So the blade is not going in this way. You want it to go in this way so that as it's riding on the angle, it's, it's running flat with, with the, the surface. So we're just going to drop that into place for now. Come in here. So what I want to do is get this guy in there and you see the bottom where the blue is showing through. We just want enough in there. You don't want like a huge gap like that. You want enough of a gap to, you know, let shavings through. We're going to tighten this screw down and we're going to check the underneath. We've got that tightened down, but now we got to look over this side and see the blade protrusion. So if you can see that, like, the blade's sticking out, but that's pretty far. We don't want it sticking out that far. So we're going to adjust this a little bit. Kissing over the edge there. I don't know if you can see it or not. We're just above the blades, like right here, this dark line. Just sticking out. So let's give this a try. Okay, I've got this piece of this pine three quarter inch pine. It might be too much for this type of thing, but we'll give it a shot. So let's clean off. I got oil all over my hands. The last thing I want to do is drop this thing right now. Spend all this time polishing it and making it pretty and work functioning, but let's see. So it's it's cutting but it's it's digging too. So it could be grain direction. I'm sure it's not. OK, 
Okay, we are cutting shavings. They're pretty close. It's a little bit tight. Let's see if we can pull this blade back just a little bit more. There we go. Nice. Okay, let's dig, dig out those shavings. So that right there, it's giving you pretty good shavings. I mean, it's not meant to be a finished plane by any means, but like here, we're getting pretty thin wispy shavings out of a, what did I buy this for? Seven bucks at Walmart for these three? Or not Walmart, Harbor Freight. I think they were seven bucks. I don't know, there's no price that I didn't save the receipt, but I'll look it up. If it's different, I'll, I'll put it in the video. I'll post it over where I'm saying seven bucks because I could be off, but I don't see myself paying much more than 20 bucks for these. So there we go. And there it is. Um, we spent, I don't know, 20 minutes on this. No, I'm very longer than that because the video is probably longer than that because I'm talking away. But I mean, could it has to be less than an hour, right? 30 minutes maybe we spent. So if I spent $20 on this plane or for all three, you know, that means this thing was just around seven bucks pretty much. So for $7, you get a brass full body brass plane with hardwood polished. We spent an hour to polish everything and, and kind of make it our own and sharpen it. And we've got a tool now that we can use to do little tiny bits. If, if this hand plane, you know, if this big monster can't get in somewhere, right? And we need tiny little micro work that even a block plane. So like here's even, by comparison, here's a block plane, right? And then even behind that, there's a hand plane, a number four smoothing plane, which is by all means a small plane, right? Then you've got your hand block plane to do smaller work. And then we've got this little guy that can even do even the most smallest minute detail work. So it's it's not bad for taking off little wisps if you need you know just bring it down where you don't want to bring a chisel in it's kind of a it's not like a every day you're going to use this type of thing but once in a while just a little novelty type thing it, it's kind of cool okay so that's all for today we took a three-piece harbor freight plane took one of them out and kind of made it our own polished it up sharpened it up and made it into an actual functioning tool um, the ones out of the box, you're not doing anything with that. Like I said, that blade was so dull. I don't know that you're actually going to do anything with it. And I don't think it's like a novelty thing. I mean, they were selling it in the tool section. So, um, yeah, but that's it for today. If you like this type of content, I appreciate subscribe down below, uh, like comment so you can see more coming up in the future. Um, I do all different kinds of stuff. So this is just some of it, but, uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.